Hello everyone. Uh, we're going to add a new command and uh, a new tool to AutoCAD Mobile today. And so what we're going to end up doing is we're going to create a new drawing here. I'm just going to give it a name. Uh, we're going to be working with a command called Spline, so I'm going to call it Spline Logo and make sure it's set to Imperial. So I'm going to create a line here to set the size of the logo that I'm going to import and then trace in a sec. So I'm just going to click near the origin, point it up, and I'm just going to use 6. And I'm just going to press escape and I'm just going to zoom in on that line. So the reason I put that is when I insert my image, I'm going to enlarge it so that uh, the height of that ends up being 6. And um, that's what we're going to use a little bit further on near the end of this assignment. So I'm just going to jump on um, just any image search or search engine. And I'm just going to grab the Packers logo here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the one on the right, the preview. I'm going to click Save Image As. And I'm just going to save this to my desktop so that I know where it is. That's very important because we'll need to uh, find it or locate it in a sec in AutoCAD Mobile. So now I have it saved to my desktop. And I'm going to close, the, uh, close Google. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the tab on the left that says XREF, and I'm going to click Attack, Attach, XREF. You have to save your drawing first before it allows you to. And uh, what you can do here is the top left, there's a little button that says Upload, and that's going to allow you to uh, add any sort of image file to your, um, your AutoCAD mobile space. And so I'm just going to go find it on my desktop, And I'm just searching for it here. And I opened it. I'm going to hit attach. And I'm just going to click that box in place. So there it is. There's the logo. I want to increase the size though because I want to make sure the height of it is 6. So I'm just going to grab the corner. And I'm going to drag up. And click. That way I know so roughly this logo is going to be 6 inches in height. So now I'm going to use a new command that's not actually found in the tools. And I'm just going to turn off O snap and O track for a sec here because I don't want it to snap to edges here when I'm trying to trace the outer oval. So the new command is spline. So just type S P L I N E. And now what you're going to do is you're going to click points along the oval okay, or any sort of shape that you're trying to trace. Now, if you have uh, more severe bends or curves, you're going to want to place more points close together. Whereas if you have long, um, kind of gradually curved edges, you can space them further apart. And you'll see me do that here in the video. But I'm just clicking points along the edge. If you go too far, you find your line will distort. Um, you don't have to get this perfect because after we've created this spline, um, we're going to be able to edit uh, a bunch of handles. Essentially, everywhere you click will be a little handle that you can move um, and adjust. So I got fairly lar large gaps there in space, and now as I get closer to that, uh, that uh, more abrupt curve, I'm going to click them closer together. I'm clicking and holding the middle mouse button down and I'm zooming in and out just to shift the image around um, while I'm working while I'm clicking here. So now I'm going to start spacing it a little bit further because that's a more gradual curve. And when it gets a little bit tighter, I'm just going to 
click closer. Now, when I, once I get close to the end here, since I don't have object snap on, which would allow me to attach to that end line, I can actually right click and then go to close and it will just close the two endpoints and you will have your shape. So there we are, I outlined the outer edge there. You can see I just deleted the image temporarily there, just clicked on it, pressed delete. Then I pressed control Z to undo. Um, now you can see the line there, all those little blue handles, those you can click individually like I'm doing right there, just to fix any problems, issues you might have had while tracing. Now for the next step, there's a bunch of um, offset ovals there. And yeah, I could go ahead and I can just trace them normally with the spline command, but I'm just gonna click the offset tool, click the one I just created, and then click the next line. That's gonna work for the first three, but then I'm gonna have to start um, using the spline tool again. So you don't always have to use the spline tool when you're trying to trace something. You can see now I'm clicking on the line tool and I just have a straight edge so it makes sense just for me to use that tool. You can see I'm going a little bit beyond the oval there because I'm just going to use the trim tool at the end. So that straight line there, I'm using a line tool for, for the straight line here on the top of the G um, part that sticks out. I'm going to use a straight line. I'm going to point down here in a sec. So those are all just regular line tool. And click again. So now I have that inner oval. Now unfortunately that inner oval there is not offset from the previous ones. So I'm going to have to go use my spline tool again. Okay. This time it is going to be important for me to have object snap on because I want to attach to the endpoints of the regular lines I've already created. So I'm clicking O snap down there and object track. And I started at that point and I'm just going to click around the oval again. And again, this is just using the spline command. You have to type spline in, it's not in the draw tools. If we were using the full version of AutoCAD, we'd actually do this a slightly different way. We would use the command that is present in draw called polyline, and then you can turn your polylines into splines or um, curves of best fit. Uh, unfortunately, this is the stripped down version of AutoCAD, so we do not have that functionality. There we go, I'm just clicking the bottom part of that oval type shape now. You can zoom in if you need to. And making sure to connect. Now, this is a something I was having a problem with in AutoCAD. If I pressed escape there, the whole line I just created would just disappear which was quite frustrating. So I ended up using the close command just to make sure that that um, spline I created would, would stay there. And then I'm just gonna use the trim command to get rid of the parts that I don't need. So I'm gonna click on that modify tab, click the scissors, the trim tool, and just click the parts I don't need. And remember to check all your corners. You might have little lines extending. So there we go, there is the completed logo. Okay. Not too bad. Uh, again, if you're tracing any sort of logo, um, just remember you don't have to use spline, but spline's gonna be useful for very organic shapes. So I'm just saving it there, and now I'm going to create a PDF. So I clicked on the printer button, and I'm gonna click plot to PDF. In a sec here, so it's generating it right now. In a sec, I'll have the opportunity to download it. Okay, so I'm just going to click that little link that pops up after a while. So 
So here we go. That is a PDF uh, of the logo. Now, unfortunately, you can't download your actual drawings from AutoCAD Mobile, so we're just going to use the PDFs. Um, and again, I'm just saving it to my desktop just so I know where it is because this logo, once you have traced it, I'm going to ask that you uh, send it to me either through email or attaching it to Google Classroom. Um, because the next step is we're actually going to take this drawing, this logo um, that we've created, and we're going to um, use what's called a CNC machine. So at my home, I built a three-axis CNC machine. It can uh, uh, essentially move in three different directions. It's uh, computer-controlled, and uh, any sort of drawing we have, so you can make it an AutoCAD or SketchUp or various programs, um, we can then assign tool paths to, and the machine will cut these shapes out of various materials. So um, MDF, regular wood, or I've even used um, steel and aluminum. So we're just going to use uh, MDF uh, for this example. And uh, when I do it for you, if you choose to send me a logo, I will do this. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually see and see this out of, out of MDF. So um, there's many different ways that you can assign tools to the lines that we've created here. Um, what I just did there is that inner G shape. I've used a, a tool called a, a V bit. Um, so that's kind of this V shape tool. And um, I've created what's called a pocket. So uh, a whole area that has a slight taper to the edges. Okay, so you can select an enclosed shape and you can um, machine away all the material within that shape. Now, another thing that we can do is I can select the lines. Okay. And I can create what's called a, a profile cut. And that's going to allow me to essentially redraw those lines onto a piece of material, okay, as opposed to um, clearing out some sort of area. So I'm just resetting the preview here, and I'm trying it again. I forgot to turn off the first tool there, but you can see kind of the outer edge, it worked well. So this is just with the um, with the profile done. I'll just turn it off here. There we go. Try it again. There we go. So that's if you just trace the lines as opposed to removing or pocketing some of the area. Uh, I'm just going to change the depth here because I find uh, it's going down a little bit too far. And I forgot to turn off the tool again. There we go. So now it's a little bit more visible. Okay, so this is a preview of what the machine would do if I were to um, use what's called the, the G code or the CNC code um, that this program is going to create. So the next thing I'm doing here is after I've etched out those lines with the V bit, you'd want to remove that, that logo from the, the block of wood that you're that you're uh, machining it from. So I'm just creating an outside profile with a different bit. It's called an end mill. And it's just going to essentially cut right through all of the material as opposed to tracing the lines. So there you go. You can see right at the end, it creates that hole right through the material. Um, and at that point, that logo would be complete. So like I said, uh, if you... If you guys want to go ahead and do that, uh, trace some sort of logo, um, or you can even create your own sort of design, roughly six to six to eight inches in, in um, square in, in terms of the space. Um, what I can do is I can then take the PDFs you will generate, I can feed them into my program here, and I can machine them um, on my machine. Um, I didn't, I don't believe I attached it to this video, but I'll uh, attach some uh, examples that students have done in the past. So what I'm doing here now in the video is I'm just saving my tool paths. I use two different tools to create that what you see and one's a v-bit, one is a regular end mill, so I have to save them as different paths so that the machine knows to well change the tool or essentially I change the tool. I'm just saving them as different paths. And there we go. So in my next video, I will show the machining part. Thanks for watching.